I think really you can't go wrong with any of these three kennels. Um, now, yes, I did say three. The moment you have all been waiting for. Our review of the dog crates. Uh, folks, this probably falls into the tier right above how do I get my puppy to stop biting me question. Which crate should I be buying for my dog? Now, granted, there are other crates outside of the spectrum, but these are the four brands that people ask us about the most. We have the Gunner Kennel. We have Dakota 283. It's their G3 series. This is Rough Land Kennels. And then the Lucky Kennel. Now, I want to start off with a little disclaimer for y'all. Gunner sent me this kennel for review. Dakota 283 sent me this kennel for review. Haven't been able to get a hold of Roughland in a little while, so no, they did not send this to me. I had this one here, but Lucky sent this kennel to me for review. Um, these kennels look a little bit different in size. We happen to be large, 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 and then this is their intermediate. Um, they do now have a large out, but I don't have one of those. So the features are the same, the size is a little different. As we look at these kennels, I wanna break down each and every single one of them with the pros, the cons, and the practical usage, okay? These kennels, at, I wanna start this off by saying these are not all in the same class. They're lumped into the same class with a question of which one do I need, but we're gonna be covering what we feel like is the best usage for these, and you'll be able to make a decision after watching this bang for the buck and your price range and your budget, what is the best kennel for you? Okay, folks, so we're gonna go through each of these and I personally am not going to remember all of the stats of exact pricing of each crate as well as the exact dimensions of each crate. So I'm gonna have that thrown up on the bottom as we talk about each individual brand and the unit that I have here in front of me. Um, their kind of large and intermediate option as well as the price as well as the dimensions. That's gonna be a big factor for you making a decision. I wanna start over here on this side and we'll work back this direction. We have the Gunner Kennel. Now, I want to say, first of all, this thing is heavy, okay? We're not even jumping pros and cons yet. It just took me like half an hour to get this thing drug over here to be able to get ready to shoot the video. But when we look at it from the outside in, First of all, it is um, double wall, okay? That means insulation factor. You have a thick double wall kennel. The thing breaks in half. This happens to be the only one that does this, but it bolts together on the outside. The two pieces bolt together. So for a breakdown, a little easier storage or, or what have you, because it is such a big unit. The door here is um, heavy duty, it locks and it has extra pins to pin the door into place for additional sturdiness, all right? You've got a key so you can lock your dog in here. When you're traveling, it comes with handles attached to the top and then built in, if you can see these, turn a little bit here, um, tie down in stabilizer bars. That'd be a good way for it. Now, when you come on the inside, a couple things I wanna point out here. Um, there is no ventilation on the bottom half of this kennel other than out the front. And for me, this falls into the category of a plus. Dogs shed like crazy. And if you're gonna have this thing setting anywhere, the top is plenty enough airflow. The air comes down, up, and then out. But having no ventilation holes on the bottom kind of prevents hair from getting everywhere. This one came with a pad. I am not a huge fan of these foam pads that any of the companies make because anything that can be destroyed will be destroyed as far as a dog goes and this would fall into that tier. If you have a dog that's not a chewer, these are nice rubber pads and I know that we'll talk about the pads that come with some of the other units. It does have a drain hole in the back. This drain hole in the back is detachable. It's got a plug basically for it so you can screw it open, rinse the crate out, pour it all out the back, smart move, and then put the cap back on. 
and put you back in there, sir. Um, another thing that's interesting here, this uh, framework for your door is replaceable if a door were to ever break or anything along those lines. And as for this door, the frame actually screws in, bolts in, and you can take it out and flip it over if you want the door to for your setup. Like if you have two crates next to each other and you want them to open both out or both in or whatever your preference is. You know, like if you're reaching over the tailgate, it'd be easier kind of if the door opened this way or you could reach the latch on this side maybe. Or because they do close fairly easily, if the door opened this way, your dog crawls into it, you can close it. Whatever your preference is, you can switch the door around. Now, the last thing here with this bad boy is they knew it was heavy. They put some wheels on it to help you roll it around. And on hard surfaces, that works pretty well. It didn't work quite so well across the gravel, so I ended up picking it up to carry it. But all in all, this thing is giant, all right? Some of the major pros that I see are the double wall insulation. This is going to keep the cold out and the heat out insulation works both directions right so in the heat of the summer this is going to keep your dog cooler in the dead of the winter it's going to keep your dog warmer now every single one of these kennels comes with accessories gunner is no different they do include a lot of the things as standard but they have an all-weather kit and then they do have a fan that can mount on the sides and potentially the front that i would have to fact check but they do have fans and all-weather kits for this unit Next kennel here. Step aside, sir. Okay. All right, folks, moving on to the Dakota 283 G3 kennel. Some of the features that we want to start off with is on the outside, all the way around, we're going to talk about the door and the construction. This is a square design, and it is, I believe, with uh, they have a kit to help you do this, but it'd be the kennels can be stacked on top of each other. You have a metal door up front with a flip style handle latch and lockable. This framework with uh, six bolts here on the inside allows you to flip that so that you can have the door swing whichever direction you want. Um, this kennel does not have any drain, but it does have ventilation all the way around. Show you what that looks like, okay? We got top and bottom ventilation, and then in the back hole, I guess there is a drain, they did it on the top side. That's a fun one, okay? So when you are thinking about drains, it either needs to be pluggable, like the last kennel, or in a situation where it kind of um, prevents splash from coming out the back. Now, with this, it is not a, this is a single wall construction, and this is something that I want to, to point out in here, is you've got where this framework attaches, if you put your hand, you can actually run it around the inside and you can feel where those uh, bolts screw in through. So you have something, and these are where the practical things are gonna come in from the dog, the dog mind, the dog guy been around a lot of dogs. If something can be destroyed or chewed on or broken, it will be, okay? So here we have a built-in ledge that kind of allows dogs to chew on that. Not exactly the world's greatest thing, but if you don't have a big chewer, it's not gonna be a problem. Now, I kinda glanced over this, but you have a built-in handle. This handle, absolutely cool idea as far as being there and easy to pick up the kennel, which weighs drastically less than the last one. But when you look here on the inside, again, you have another ridge. Can you see that in here? Kinda, okay, so where the molding of this comes down, it essentially creates a ridge on the inside of the kennel. Now that's a perfect place for a dog that's maybe a little bit bored or something like that to sit there and gnaw on that side ridge, okay? It's another spot that'll probably show some wear over time. All in all, this is a pretty cool kennel until you look at this. Now folks, um, I'm all about safety and I'm all about setting up the right situation for the dogs. I think this is a great unit. One major flaw with it though is this door. If you go ahead and grab on the door here um, with very pretty minimal pressure, I can get about two, almost three inches of gap there. A dog that is not comfortable or for some reason wants to dig or try and get out of that could pretty easily get 
a paw stuck in here and once it gets out it will be difficult for them to get it back in so this for me not a, not a good situation a lot of the other things in the crate are pretty cool though mm. next up and this is the crate like i said folks that um, they did not send to us but we have the roughland kennels large crate this again is a single wall construction these come standard and they have the little um, spots for it even for ventilation to be on the um, top half and the bottom half. When I ordered these, I custom ordered it to not have ventilation on the bottom so that the hair doesn't get everywhere. You have here um, that upper side for drain aspect of things as well as a little bit of a handle for carrying. This one's the lightest of the bunch for sure. And then um, these kennels are all come standard that they do stack and they have lots of accessories here. You can get a fan, you can get a cover, you can get a nameplate for your kennel, you can get different style doors, you can get handles that attach to the top, you can get totes for the top. If you wanna stack them next to each other, you can get brackets to mount them next to each other so they stay put. You can also get brackets that attach to the side so that you can ratchet strap the dudes down. Lots and lots of add-ons for these. So I would say right out of the gate, bang for the buck this one looks like the best price you start adding all of the other things in it's probably going to be pretty close give or take unless you just go with the standard um, basic model this door now if we talk about this is a, a composite door um, hard plastic holds up really well um, you have the ability to take the door completely off now as far as a of the safest of the doors coming off or something i would say this door could probably be broken or something else to that effect it would be possible but it is easy to open from one side and open from the other without any change at all now when you get inside um, there is a raised portion in the middle moments is essentially creating a moat around the outside so if your dog does have an accident there the potential for that to go to the moat and the dogs stay in the dry zone or even if they're just wet coming from a training session or a hunt they get inside the water can run away from them and then you'd have the ability to tip it up to the back and utilize those drain holes last and definitely not least we have the lucky kennel now i did mention that this unit here is the intermediate size but they do have a large size now that would be closer to the sizes of the other units that we have here we go around the outside again this is a single wall construction but it's a little thicker than the last two as far as that single wall goes you have built into this comes standard with handles as well as your tie down brackets um, heavy duty here and then ventilation on the top half all the way around and then in the back you actually have your drain holes so it's a quick little uh, tip up to drain everything out i will say that like i mentioned before with drain holes this is sometimes a, a fault if you get too much water or if you have a potty accident or something stuff is coming out the back speaking from experience only okay now when you get to the inside of this kennel you have the ability to switch this door pretty easily it's uh two pins those come out and then you can flip this right over here so as far as the door changing side of things um, you know you see ease of change or something to that effect you go is it as safe but actually i believe that this kennel here and the first kennel that we looked at there are the only two that have the five star crash test rating so obviously the door is safe enough you've got um, two pins there so this by far is the simplest design as far as um, switching out that door then your nameplate just so that it looks snazzy um, comes off flips around so that the lucky is always upright all right so i'm going to put this back where it was yes folks that easy um, it is also keyed lockable so you've got that and then these pins 
come down, the U door is super attached. Now, with this being another single wall construction side of things, you do have that framework that bolts into the single wall, and there is a lip right here that you can um, get to those bolts on the inside of this. Now, these are, um, they did a good job with it. There's no additional bolt sticking outside, so you've got the bolt and then the nut. There's no bolt that could have potentially a little bit of a sharp edge or something like that sticking out. But anytime you have this lip, which this kennel has the lip, this kennel is flat here, this kennel has that lip that we were talking about, and then this kennel being double wall, there is no lip at all here either. You get into something. Inevitably, folks, anytime you have dogs, you're going to deal with potty accidents or especially with hunting dogs, they get into a slough or a water hole, they drink some crappy water, you have some diarrhea on the road. The squirts, the worst, all right? And the worst part about it is it's gonna get inside that lip and you're gonna be in there scrubbing and rinsing and then still three days later you go, yep, there's still some more and you get back in there with a brush. So the easier things are to clean, the less cracks and crevices stuff can get into. So that would be my, um, you know, pretty much Biggest negative for this kennel would be the inside lip of that. As far as overall weight goes, this one is uh, more comparable to the other single wall units. It's pretty easy to pick up and tote around. And the intermediate size that they have here, I would say would have been, originally they came out with just the intermediate size. That was um, one of my downfalls, if you will, because it's a little bit too small for our adult male short ears where the large is kind of a better size. Now they have the large, no longer an issue. Um, I know that these guys also have fans as well as I believe, um, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but the Dakotas has uh, kennel covers. So we've got all weather covers all the way around. And I know uh, Lucky does as well. They have pads for the inside. Rufflin has pads for the inside. Dakota, I think utilizes wet mutt pads or some brand similar and then Gunner has their own pads for the inside. I expressed my opinion on the pads being that anything that can be chewed up or destroyed will be, but um, they've all done a nice job on trying to create something that's really durable as well as um, semi-soft, semi if you will, which is a difficult thing to find. Something that has padding, but is also durable. So, and then as um, I mentioned here, this is a one piece unit. The only one out of these four that actually comes apart is the gunner. Now granted, it's beneficial because it's by far the largest unit. So for if you need to store it or something along those lines, you can break it down and it be you know, almost closer to the footprint of these units as well. Um, their dimensions as far as interior dimensions are very similar. And like I said, those are all along the bottom for you to make your comparison. Now, I wanna kinda do a um, recap of all of them. In the beginning, I mentioned these are not all in the same class, okay? I feel that it's important to mention that to help you to make a decision. First of all, pricing wise, I know that these guys come in at the bottom as far as the least expensive unit, or I'm pretty sure. they. Um, but if you start adding all of those accessories in, they even just the tie down straps and the handles that the other units kind of come standard with, you're getting closer to price comparison. So there's not a ton of price difference when you're looking at them. But in my opinion, these kennels make great kennels for around the house, or if you were to keep the unit inside something more protected when you're traveling, like a vehicle or something along those lines. Okay, when you move in, um, big things being that this door itself doesn't lock. So we actually use these Rufflin kennels around the building around the kennel because they stack, they're easy, they're lighter weight, they're easy to clean, the doors come off, all of those things that I kind of mentioned as far as they fit and, and they're durable. They fit all of those things for what we need here at the kennel. Now, when you look at um, the Luckies or the Dakotas or the Gunners, I'm gonna say that if I'm looking for a travel unit, one that I am going to be taking, even if that is inside the back of like a Tahoe or a, you know, UT, not UTV, haha, <laughs> Um, a SUV, those are the words I'm looking for. Um, I am going to opt for either the Gunner 
or the lucky kennel here as far as durability, the, the five star crash rating, right? That's a thing that's real. We are traveling down the road, anything could happen. You don't have insurance on your vehicles or your house or your property because you hope something won't happen. You have it there in case something does. These guys are proving that they're going to be the safest option for your dog during travel. Now, if I'm putting a kennel in the back of my truck, for me, I feel like the gunner is going to be the best option. It has the built-in tie-down straps that run through the whole unit, as well as double wall insulation for more protection from heat and cool. All around, I like the best for my dogs, and this seems to be out of this class, the best in that specific situation. Again, exposed to the elements, strapped down in the back of a truck. I think, really, you can't go wrong with any of these three kennels. Um, now, yes, I did say three, and for me, Sorry guys, but this Dakota and the flaw on the door here puts it in a no-go zone for me. If they fix that down the road, I would absolutely like a lot of the features of the rest of it. And I do know that Dakota has different classes of kennels, but in this specific category, that door being, like I said, the no-go for me with them. If you guys have questions, please put them in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts as well as I hope that this helped you make a decision on which kennel is best for you and your dog. I'm the guy with the pink gun. We will see you in the next video.